Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Charles back here again for my rational perspective on Nottingham Forest 1, Chelsea 1. Chelsea start the year with a disappointing draw, letting a lead slip. It's kind of a New Year same problem situation for Chelsea under Graham Potter. I felt a lot of the things that excited us about that win and performance against Bournemouth um, earlier in the week kind of deteriorated now, uh, especially with the way that second half played out where Chelsea lacked real inspiration uh, in terms of momentum, how much it shifted after half time towards Nottingham Forest and how little Chelsea were able to do to kind of bring back any control. But when you actually look at the game in total, um, even with the goal we scored in the first half, there weren't many openings. Uh, even if Chelsea did have a lot of possession in periods of the game, it was kind of just between our back four. And that's a real problem and that's a consistent problem with Chelsea and you know you look back to that Bournemouth game when Reese James goes down injured and you can kind of if you're being really harsh say Chelsea had a, a good 50 minutes against Bournemouth and in the moment our best player goes off it all changes and uh, just looking at that performance today it, it, as I say it lacked inspiration and I, a lot of the criticisms that have been leveled at Graham Potter a lot of the criticisms that have been leveled at this squad in terms of a, a lack of creation um, a lack of you know a real strong mentality is kind of the thing I'm picking up on today just I've seen it too many times this season where things things go against Chelsea in a game we can see the goal um, the momentum of it shifts and we just there, there's no response and that's the real concerning thing I think for Graham Potter when he'll be reflecting on this game um, particularly when you when you see two games against Man City on the horizon next week it, it is really concerning I was encouraged that Potter stuck with the 4-3-3 um, we're seeing with Chelsea's recruitment in the January window and it seems like that's the direction Chelsea are going in I you know this performance and result doesn't change my feeling that that is the right direction for Chelsea to go in I, I like the idea of having those two eights of, of kind of real wide players but then of course it comes down to individual performances on the day um, when you compare the performances of you know Kai Havertz Christian Pulisic Raheem Sterling who did score but you know, those players, Mason Mount, uh, Zachariah, you compare those performances they had against Bournemouth uh, when they were pressed a lot, of course, more intensely away from home. The things we saw that we were really encouraged by, those connections, those that, those things that were quite repetitive in Chelsea's game that looked positive against Bournemouth were not there today. Um, so there's always that, but I, I still think that's the right way to go. But with the one change being Aspilicueta for Reese James, uh, you, you re really saw as the game went on the problem that Chelsea had. And it's an obvious problem. It's one that we all knew before a ball was kicked this season. When you don't have Reese James on the right side of Chelsea's defence and when you have a back two of Kalidou Koulibaly and Thiago Silva, despite the brilliance of Thiago Silva, um, the lack of speed in that defence and the lack of speed out wide in defence is a real problem. And I felt that also Jorginho's lack of mobility was really exploited well by um, Nottingham Forest's really good press, really good hard, hard work. I think Yates was probably one of the standout players in the game, but also their front three. It was quite clearly a plan of theirs to counter-attack. That was not a massive shock to me if you watched how they beat Liverpool earlier in the season. Uh, it, we knew Chelsea were going to have a lot of the possession. It was going to be kind of a low block from... Forest, and then they were going to use the pace of their front three of Awanya, Gibbs, White, and, and Brennan Johnson, and, and Kepa had to make some big saves in the game. And that's kind of when you're looking at the game back. Forest had the better chances throughout the game. I think maybe they would, um, even though it would be a good result for them getting a point against Chelsea. Uh, maybe Steve Cooper looks at it and goes, "We could have got all three today because, as I say." Chelsea just throughout all of their possession just lack such a cutting edge and, and as I say th these are things that I've been saying for, for several years so we're into a new year the first day of a new year and I'm, I'm sounding uh, like a broken record like I'm sure you guys are feeling at home watching Chelsea at the moment um Raheem Sterling scoring was good you know it was a bit of a freak goal and that that in itself is a problem because until Hakim Ziyech came on late on where was that creativity again where, who was stepping up where were those moments where Chelsea were really getting through Nottingham Forest uh, who had a good performance but looking at the way Forest were dismantled by Manchester, Manchester United earlier in the week and, and thinking about this game and thinking where Chelsea needed to win with Spurs losing earlier in the day and you know we need to make up ground that's the case for Chelsea at this point in the season and again, not seeing that kind of very basic words to use, but fight, not seeing that kind of conviction in the performance it is a real problem for me. 
going into the second half of the season where Chelsea need to pick up the mood. Graham Potter and his players need to pick up the mood at Stamford Bridge. And that is going to really dampen it heading in, heading into a real big test against Man City, who, yeah, did drop points yesterday. But it's it's a massive test for these players. Um, I think there will be criticism leveled at Graham Potter as the first, I don't know, 10 minutes of that second half played out and Chelsea were getting little of the ball. A um, few of our attacking players were getting on it as well and, and really making runs. Havertz, Sterling and Pulisic got very isolated at the top of the pitch and it looked like Forrest were really pushing for, for an equaliser and it looked like they were going to get it. They were getting set pieces, which is where their equaliser from Sergio Aurea came from. Um, I felt that Christian Pulisic was did not look good in that in that moment. I think, you know, he, he kind of got a hand to the face and he kind of threw himself away from the situation and just conceding in that manner. It was really sloppy. It was really tame. And I think that the criticism will be leveled at Graham Potter. Why didn't you change things earlier? Um, but then you look at the, the players that came off the bench, I think with the exception of Hakim Ziyech and, and also Mateo Kovacic. I mean, Kovacic and Ziyech have just returned from the World Cup. I don't think we would have expected them to start this game. Uh, I, I wouldn't be stunned if, if both of those players are actually starting the game against Man City. I think both of those players, particularly Ziyech is the one that stands out to me because, you know, thinking about Ziyech pre-World Cup when he just didn't look interested at Chelsea at all, when you felt like his Chelsea career was going to come to an end, seeing what he did with Morocco at the World Cup, you're like, can he bring this form back to Chelsea? It was only a small cameo and he did his kind of trademark thing of cutting onto his left foot on the right and swinging a ball in, but it was a brilliant ball that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, another one of our subs who... That's why we bought him in those type of situations. Yeah, it was it was decent defending from Sergio Aurier to kind of block him off a little bit. But I expect a player of Aubameyang's quality to gobble those chances up because, you know, he's not starting this game and he was not at the World Cup and Kai Havertz is already in front of him. Uh, and, you know, again, it's just those small intangible things with the Chelsea team, the body language, the the kind of the sense that we were being bossed out of the game. You know, those are just simple non-negotiable things about Chelsea that I expect week in week out it saw the technical you know performance levels can go up and down players can make mistakes I think you have to accept that right but it, it's when I'm seeing the team be out fought by by a group of players you know you look at Nottingham Forest all the players Chelsea have brought in and, and we're talking about sort of the chemistry that needs to be built under Graham Potter look at the amount of players brought in by Nottingham Forest last summer um, and that's caused them some problems this season it really has but you know if you would have said to me you know, before the game or after the game, actually, who had the more chaotic summer, you know, who has brought in like 14 or 15 players, I would have said Chelsea, I wouldn't have said not in a forest. And again, real problem. And it just, it doesn't reflect well on, on Graham Potter, does it? And, and I know he's under a, a lot of scrutiny at the moment, uh, particularly with his body language. And, you know, you see a performance like that, you see the way that game tailed off. And it's another case where a team comes up against Chelsea, particularly away from home. And you feel like we've been out muscled. You feel like the home crowd has really got on top of Chelsea and our players haven't responded well to it. And there's those shots of Graham Potter kind of just either on the sideline, kind of looking a little bit despondent, you know, isn't being that animated. Now, I don't, that's not something that I particularly care about because I've seen very animated coaches be at Chelsea, like Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte and seen some dreadful performances, uninspiring performances. Um, I, I don't think that's the be all and end all, but I, I can see why people will look at that and go, that's a criticism. That is something that is not contributing. It's not given the impression of a very inspirational coach at a time when Chelsea need inspiration in a difficult moment. It's it's going to be dominated, I think, the next few weeks by what's happening off the pitch, actually. You know, we've got uh, Benoit Badashil from Monaco. Apparently, that deal has been agreed. I'm sure we'll be speaking about that on the channel and the podcast in the coming days. Uh, Enzo Fernandez, I'm sure that is one that people will be hoping, looking at that midfield and, and what it lacked today, will be hoping that can get over the line in the coming days, too. And, and potential other deals that could materialise over the next month but I, I think that as, as much as we'll be excited by those and be intrigued by those of what they could bring for Chelsea for the short and long term I also just think there is a there's a mentality problem I, I really do and I know that is sometimes a, a very cheap thing to label you know and, and to pin at a group of players but I I still just don't see enough response when things go wrong and things are going to go wrong you know we, we'd like to think that every game is going to be like the Bournemouth one but you're going to get injuries you're going to get setbacks there are going to be times when moments go against you in a game 
And I just think it's too flimsy at the moment with Chelsea. And, and that's that's been the case since the start of the season. That's not, not just since Graham Potter has come in. And I, you could argue that was a, a case for a lot of the, the last year. And, and in 2023, that has to be rectified if, if Graham Potter is going to get anywhere with Chelsea. You know, just, not just about the money we're spending, um, exorbitant amounts of money. It, it also is a case of that team unity and getting over difficult moments and really being able to build and, and take step forwards to make people believe in um, the, the trademark process. So those are my thoughts on the game. I want to hear yours in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you had a great festive period. Hope you had a happy new year. Uh, hopefully it can be a, a little bit more cheery in the coming weeks uh, watching Chelsea. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I will see you again very soon. All the best. Mm -hmm.